Moving on, and there has been some increase in acreage nationally for dry peas this year. But at the same time, there's also some concern over export pace for both Canada and the U.S. North Dakota State University Extension's Dr. Frayne Olson joined me to take a closer look at what's affecting the dry pea market. Well, it, so there's some short-term issues and some longer-term issues. Short-term, um, there's been some concerns about our ability in the U.S. as well as in Canada, which produce a lot of dry peas as well, to, for our export pace. We use them both domestically as well as exporting to the international market. India is one of the large buyers globally of pulses in general, but specifically uh, the field peas or dry peas out of the U.S. and, and Canada. So right now they have a tariff, a 50% tariff on the import of Pulse products into India, and that's been putting a short-term damper on, on the, the, the pea market. Um, although there's expectations that will start to be reduced over time, and then we look longer term, if we look over the next two or three years, the demand base for uh, protein, vegetable protein in particular, is growing both domestically and internationally. So when I talk about the, the potential for the, the pea market, um, that's really what I'm talking about. It's kind of these longer term developments that farmers need to be looking at and maybe there are some opportunities depending upon their growing region and the, then the current crop mix that they have. So when we're talking about growing, what's the best climate for dry peas? Well, you know, so dry pea is a cool season legume. So soybean is a warm season legume, uh, typically likes warmer temperatures, lots of moisture. Um, the dry pea is, is a little bit different. It's a legume, but it prefers kind of drier climate and a little bit cooler climate. So again, parts of the western growing regions in Nebraska, as we get into western parts of North Dakota as well, uh, that's kind of the preferred growing region. Um, it, if you have too high a water levels, then all of a sudden there's some disease issues that start to occur. But again, it's a cool season legume, so there are certain regions that it really, really go, works very well. And what are some of the best uses for dry peas? I know uh, I've read animal feed, lots of protein. What do you think? Yeah, so the two characteristics that, that, that people are really after is that it has high protein levels. It also has high digestible uh, fiber, um, which again in the human diets is very desirable, but also is desirable within livestock or animal diets. And so the, the, domestically, the three big uses would be animal feed, primarily in the beef area. Um, as, as a supplement for a protein. The other areas would be in, in pet food. Um, the pet food market has realized that the higher protein levels are also desirable for uh, both dog food as well as cat food. And of course then human consumption. And it's, it's the human consumption part that has the highest value, but also has the highest demand for quality and quality specifications. And, and of those two, of those three different markets, the, the pet food market and the human food market are the ones that seem to be growing the largest and the most rapidly. And how's acreage looking for 2019? We seeing increases in that? We're seeing a slight increase in acreage nationally, at least based on the prospective plantings report. Um, we're, we're looking at a slight cutback here in North Dakota, but an increase in Nebraska and an increase in, in particular in Montana. And part of that, of course, is because of the different cropping mixes that that are available as you get into these different growing regions. So total acreage is expected to be up slightly, but I do know again longer term um, as, as I talk to some of the people in the industry, in particular those that are interested in the human food side, they are looking to try and contract some more acres because they want specific varieties with specific characteristics. And what do you see as the drawba uh, drawbacks for dry peas that farmers would need to look at? Okay, so right now it is a specialty crop. It, it's a very small market crop which means there are typically not a lot of farmers that grow it, there's not a lot of processors or buyers, end users that will be using this, and there isn't a lot of trade, so it gets to be kind of a thin market. It's very difficult to get good market information about what's happening unless you're one of those buyers or sellers, you're actively engaged in the marketplace. Um, and a lot of it is grown under contract. Um, so rather than spot market, which we're comfortable with for wheat and for corn and for soy or soybeans, um, this is really a contracted crop at this, di at this stage because of the smaller volumes. So you've got to be very careful about who you're doing business with, about trying to get good market information about what's happening, and be very cautious about having some alternative markets in place if your primary buyer starts to, to uh, decrease their purchases. So again, if you've contracted with a particular company, 
um, what happens to the excess production? What happens to the stuff that's not been contracted? How is that priced where you need to be delivering it? So there are some issues that farmers need to be cautious of and need to be aware of before they start growing these, these uh, specialty crops. One more note, harvest management is especially important if you want to get high quality field peas to be marketed as seed or food by the buying public and receive a premium price for the crop.